So now I'm going to now I'm going to proceed to ink this simple cartoon head. Uh, I use a brush. This is a what is the brand? Silver. It's kind of a generic. Bought it at a reputable art supply store. It's a fairly new brush. I, I expect it won't last as long as a really higher grade one will, but it holds its point well. This is a pretty large one. It's a number six because this is a full sheet image. On my main strip, I have these other much smaller ones. These are uh, Windsor and Newton Series 7 Sable brushes. They're pretty expensive, but if you clean them every time you use them, they last a good long while. Ink is pretty hard on a brush compared to uh, watercolor, say. It really might be able to see how uh, the ink is starting to stain these. This is a number one and a number two. I use these more frequently for my own comic, but today we'll use a, a larger brush. So I've got a water bottle here that I'll use to keep my brush wet. I've got some ink. This is a Higgins Black Magic ink bottle, but it doesn't really have Higgins Black Magic ink in it because I don't think Higgins Black Magic ink is particularly, well, it doesn't satisfy me. It's not very dark. And so this is actually a mixture of, let's see, it's got Sumi ink in it. That's This is the newest kind I have. It's got some Speedball Super Black, which I actually didn't like very much. I thought it was a little too thick. So I wound up mixing it out of this older bottle of Higgins Black Magic and I would top these off and get a mix and then shake it up real good. That would satisfy me. But right now, pretty happy with the Sumi, but of course, I'm just topping off. That's a little tip when you're working with a brush or a pen. Shake this a little bit and get everything stirred up. One nice thing is to keep your ink bottle pretty full so you can really you can easily see the level of the ink in the top. So I top off this working bottle and I just refill it continually. So I've got a little bit of ink just on the tip of my brush and I'm going to start with this line here. Start light with a thin line and then I'll thicken it a little bit and let's say bring it around. Notice how it gets really thick here towards the bottom. I'm going to uh, pretend there's a light coming from up up here along this line. So everything on this end, this end of the character is going to have kind of a thinner line. Everything on the back Everything on the back here and the bottom will be heavier and that way we'll sort of give a feeling of solidity to the character. A little bit of a sense of light. What is easiest for me is to kind of pull the brush along the line. And then you sort of, that should be a little heavier, I think, so I'm going to do this line again.
And you notice I'm rotating the page every which way. Whatever makes it easiest for my hand to drag that brush. In a way that's comfortable for my hand. I'm sort of using a angling this line off my elbow. On a bigger page, painters will angle off of their shoulder and do use their whole arm. But this is a medium sized thing and just my wrist or my elbow works. So this is kind of the natural curve. And so whatever I can do to make the page line up to the natural thing my hand's gonna do, um, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, here's, this is his nose. I like to give it a kind of thick in the middle and thin at the end. Sort of a sense of weight there in the center. And that's all just how far, how near and far the brush is to the page as to how thick or thin the line is. So when you're inking with a brush, it's sort of like you're drawing in the air on top of the page. You just get a sense for how long that is and that's how far you go. When you're drawing with a pencil, you have that friction. You feel like you're bearing down on the page, but you cannot do that with the brush. It won't work at all. And so you're just drawing in the air, closer or farther from the page as needed. Now this outline of his eye needs to all stay pretty thin, so I need to be pretty careful here. I don't like it to get too heavy or it looks like he's uh, got a bunch of mascara on or something, or it's depressed or tired if it's too heavy. up the top here just a little. I'll probably mess it up more trying to fix it, which is often the case. I'm going to even it out a little bit. Then I'll make the little oval for his pupil. Cleaning up that outer edge there a little bit. Then I'll fill in the pupil. And that is that character ink. Get some of the ink out of my brush here. And I'll cap my ink bottle. And then need to let it dry, but one thing that's nice about a brush is that the ink actually dries really fast. If you use a, uh, a nib pen, let's see, I should have one here, like this, dip it into the ink and make a line. For whatever reason, it takes much longer to dry because uh, the ink, you're also dragging along with this pen. The ink sits up on top of the page and, and beads up there. It sits up there and takes a long time to dry. But with a brush, it's pretty quick. <laughs> So this is a white plastic eraser. I like Statler Mars plastic. I'm fond of Statler. I like the blue that they use on all of their materials. These white plastic erasers, I like them because they don't, they don't damage the paper surface very much at all. You can lift up ink if you really bear down on the ink. So I try and work around the ink line as I'm erasing and just get the pencil that's showing. So here is the final image of my character Jack completely inked with its pencil lines erased.